Here we have the 1998 Toyota Land Cruiser LC80. This car is as old as me, but this car only has 15,000 kilometers on it. First thing you'll notice with this LC80 is just how fresh it is. Now this car has original paint, it's original everywhere. The owner is actually a first owner. So now let's just walk around it first. Here at the back, since this is the Dubai version, you don't have the ambulance doors, you just have the split tailgate. You have the Land Cruiser spare tire. And over here at the right side, everything is just so nice as well. Here you have your Nito Terra Grappler tires, and these have Vox Racing rims, the TE37s, two seven five six five eighteens. You got a step board that's also original. And the good thing about this car is that it has this uh, bull bar. It's nice and it's chrome. And what you'll notice here is for the headlamps, it's actually lined with this. It's not chrome, it's gold. Same thing for your hood, hood ornament. It's also in gold. Nice Toyota gold hood ornament. Down here, aside from your fog lamps, what's special about this, it has a factory winch. And this is the controls for the winch. This car is so nice overall. So as you enter the LC80, Number one, the door feels incredibly solid, especially for since it's a Japanese car. And inside, you have this nice leather interior. Even the headrest looks really good. It's nice and wide. Usually it's like a square shape, right? But this one's rectangular. It's nice and pleated. Over here as well, you can see that there's absolutely no cracks or anything. After all, this car only has 15,000 kilometers in it. You have your lumbar support and your power uh, seats. Over here at the side, you have your power windows, but you only have automatic for one side. So let's go and climb on in. Got a grab handle over here. As you enter the LC80, first thing you'll notice here is just how wide this car is. This is incredibly wide from the driver's seat all the way to the passenger seat. Like, I can't even reach that. That is really quite, quite wide. Let's go and check the door if it has a nice thud. That's a pretty good thud to it. To start the LC80, you don't have push start or anything, so just your regular key. Put it in there. Start it up. Fires right up. As you can see over there, 15,361 kilometers. All original. Probably heard that the doors just went and auto locked itself. Okay, let's just go and turn on the AC. So it's just this one, low or high. Here in the center, you can see that this is actually the original head unit. And what's cool about this, it's, it's actually a double head unit thing. Over here, you have your cassette. And here at the top, you have your CD. So you can actually like press here and that'll turn on. But without it, it's just the bottom part, right? And what's cool again here is that you have this button. It says up and down. That's actually for your antenna. So it's over there and it just goes up like that. It's actually quite fast. And down, it goes down like that. If you saw Doug DeMuro's video on the Lexus version of this, he says that he only has the rear heat, but this car being the Dubai version where the AC is very important, you actually have a rear cool as well. You also have your rear heat here, which has low and high as well. Then this one, the sub, that's pretty cool. So this car actually has two gasoline tanks. So if you press this button, this thing on top, as you can see, there's your sub fuel. It'll actually siphon fuel from there into your main tank right there. So you can see that the, uh, the gauge on top is decreasing while your main tank is increasing. Okay, next, your steering wheel. Your steering wheel is very similar to that in most Toyotas from this era. So even their sedans had a steering wheel like this as well. My Prado 90 has a similar steering wheel, albeit a bit smaller. You have your cruise control over here. Aside from that, it's, it's a very basic Toyota steering wheel from that era. On your left, you have your differential lockers. You can move your uh, side mirrors. You can adjust your uh, high beam height. This is your fog lamps and more fog lamps. The dashboard on this looks pretty good too. It's, it's all covered in leather. It's not exactly soft touch, but it's not hard either. It's like a mix somewhere between soft and hard. 
what's odd here is that you have this vent then usually you have it in pairs right but this one is chopped by this and the other vent is here you have an airbag ready which is impressive for this time down here you got your power in your second second if you're on uh, slippier surfaces and you want it to start in second gear that way you don't slip that much center what's odd about this is that the uh, armrest is quite far away from you to make way for the handbrake and they did that so they can put this which isn't even shaped like a cup but that's apparently your only cup holder in the car to open this up you have either this one which is just a tiny cubby or you can also open this one up What's cool about this is this one right here. Off, cool, and ice. Yep, aside from a refrigerator, this is actually an ice maker. So you can reach down here and you can see that you can actually make ice from this. And those are your ice cube trays. How amazing. What other car is an ice cube tray? I think even the S classes only have a fridge, but they don't have an ice maker. Same thing, nice leather everywhere. The seats too. The front headrests actually continue here. And they're also nice and long. Over here you have an armrest. But not just one armrest, you have two individual armrests. And this having 15,000 kilometers, fresh as day one, pretty much brand new. Close this back, just like that, and we can go hop on in. You have another grab handle over here, and here at the back. Now the uh, the leg room. This is set to my driving position, and I only have around that much leg room. I actually had more leg room in the LC100 and the LC200. So if you're a bit taller, uh, this is a bit tight. This is actually quite tight. The foot room too. Usually you can like jam your foot in there but not with this car it's really quite tight there but what's good since this car is nice and wide if you sit here on the middle ooh, you actually have your own bolsters too it's like it's a carryover from the bolsters on the left and right so you feel as if you're in an actual seat not just a seat that was slapped on there and of course here you got way more leg room because you have the entire center part to you and it's nice quite wide too this gap over here if you come on and check this one out, this has the dual AC, so you can actually have your AC settings over here. And what's cool about this is that it has a transparent tube, which carries it down and connects it to the front AC. Pretty neat trick on Toyota's part. The sunroof in this car is actually quite small for a car this size. I mean, if you open this up, just look how small that is. I expected the glass part to at least reach this area right here, but no, that's all you have. To gain entry to the third row, all you have to do is pull this lever. That one folds down. Once that is down, you can now pull this lever. And this entire thing just goes in front like that. It folds and tumbles just like that. It doesn't slide at all. The back of the LC80. So first you'll see that you have your big spare tire. So to open that, you actually have something to pull over here. So you just pull this and this one moves out of the way like that and once this is out of the way you can now reach under here here and this one goes up like that this has a split tailgate which is pretty which is pretty cool when you're camping once this one is up you can pull this and this one goes down like that and at this point you can just lounge over here and enjoy your picnic now under the hood you agree that it is one fzfe 4.5 liter inline six engine. And although this is a 90s engine, a 90s inline six, this actually has adequate power to propel this massive beast, which you'll see later in the driving segment. The first thing you'll notice with this car is that uh, its size. Now it's very big on the outside, but the thing about this car is that it doesn't feel big at all. I have a Prado 90, the uh, almost the same generation as this, but the narrower body and uh, they actually drive the same way in terms of the bulk this car is way wider but then you just don't feel it on the daily drive when you turn corners it is very stable this car it's stable probably because of its width again but what's good about this car is that even though it's a 90s car it doesn't feel like a 90s car 
you've ever driven the new Land Cruiser, the LC200, or even the one that succeeds this, the LC100, you'll be hard pressed to know the difference between the two or the three. As you go around and hit some potholes and some speed bumps, well, this car, it's, it's, it's very soft. Like, it's incredibly soft. It's as if you're riding on air suspension. In the 90s, you don't have that much when it comes to safety, and safety wasn't really the priority of people back then. You have great visibility all around. The pillars are very thin, you don't have any big uh, airbags to take up the space, cover your view. It's just it's just very nice. You can see everything around this, which is the same thing with most cars of this era. One thing that is kind of annoying with this car is that since it's a very wide car, everything is just spaced out the part. And the most annoying thing I have with this is the armrest over here. Now usually you can put just your arm here and you can just cruise along like that, but this one Unless you're probably like a 600 pound man who's this wide, this armrest is just too far away for you. You can put it at a stretch, but you kind of have to like lean like that and that's not fun. Probably wasn't the priority back then. <laughs> passenger lang yung armrest. And the reason they probably did that <laughs> is that you got a cup holder down here and that's your only cup holder in this car. You have a small one up here in the middle, but you know, it's the, the shape, it's not even shaped well. so. You're not supposed to put cups in there, it's just gonna spill. So I don't know why they would sacrifice the driver's comfort in long journeys by putting his arm far far away here just for a cup holder that's also not the, uh, the shape of a cup. This car is just, you know, the, the 90s. It was a weird time, which I don't remember. I'm not that old. So right now we're just gonna accelerate. And uh, we're at an incline right now, so it's normal that the car doesn't feel as responsive. But I must say, for a car this big, this engine is more than enough. Then again, this car also came with the uh, gasoline engine. The diesel probably were way slower than this car, and I have no idea how people with the diesels can actually live with that. This car is just a big, chunky, wide, long car, everything. So another thing you'll notice with this car, aside from its uh, right quality in terms of harshness it's just how quiet this car is this is a 90s car but it doesn't feel like a 90s car at all a lot of 90s car were pretty loud and you'll hear the engine rumble a lot but this one aside from your soft inline engine inline rumble that big inline engine rumble this car is just quiet wind noise can't hear that road noise even with these uh, bigger tires these uh, Nito grappler tires it's, it's good it's, it's a great car over